Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I'm doing a review of everything that I sewed during 2019. Happy New Year! It is New Year's Day when I'm filming this and I'm actually really quite impressed that I have managed to sit down and film this today because it's currently half past five and it's taken me this long to feel human enough to shower and put clothes on and set my camera up because yeah I celebrated a little bit too hard last night but I had a fantastic time and I hope you all did too so happy new year and yeah I just thought it would be fun to just for memory's sake I guess run through everything that I've made this year or last year now because it's now the 1st of January 2020 um, so I'm going to put some pictures up on this side of the screen and just run you through everything that I made. So. First up, the very first thing that I made was an outfit for my hen party, and my hen party was actually not until March, but I had a very slow start to all the sewing in 2019. Well, not a slow start, it's just that I was busy. I was busy making my wedding dress. So the first three months of the year, I did very little sewing other than my wedding dress. But I did manage to squeeze in a few things to take on my honeymoon and a few things, and my hen party outfit. So I got married at the very beginning of April, so I had like January, February, March to do the wedding dress sewing. But I did manage to make my hen party outfit, which was a khaki green viscose crepe Vogue V9075 jumpsuit. And yeah, I enjoyed wearing it to my hen party, I wanted something fairly simple because we made these floral headdresses, head, um, flower crowns, which was so much fun. But I will say this wasn't my most successful make of the year because it hasn't had that much wear out of it. The fabric's one that really has to be ironed, like a lot, and it's just, I'm gonna turn it into something else I think because it hasn't had the wear that it ought to have. Then the next thing that I made, of course, was my wedding dress, which is by far my, you know, the most significant thing I've ever made. And, you know, obviously it's going to carry a lot of sentimental value, hopefully for the rest of my life. So that was a huge achievement and something that I would really encourage other engaged sewists to consider doing. And give yourself longer than three months because it was a bit of a stressful process for me. It was a fun process, an enjoyable process, but I do wish I'd had maybe another two months just that I could have taken it a little bit more slowly. But anyway, I managed to make a couple of things for my honeymoon. So I made a simple sew cocoon dress in Atelier Brunette Viscose. And this one I'm pleased with because it's a make that can be worn in the summer with bare legs and it's like nice and floaty because it's viscose. But actually if I wear it with a slip underneath, because of the colours, I can also wear it in the winter like with dark tights and like a black blazer over it and I can get away with wearing it to work. So that was a really good versatile piece, although I hate that it needs ironing a lot, but I guess that's a fact of viscose. Um, I also made, in time for my honeymoon, some yellow floral trousers, and this was a hack of the New Look 6446 pattern, it's actually a jumpsuit pattern, but I turned them into trousers, and they're very bright, very floral, um, but they were great fun wearing on my honeymoon, and I've worn them on other holidays since then as well, so definitely one that will come out in the summer. And actually, they're kind of one of the first pairs of trousers I think I've ever made because trousers haven't featured much in my sewing, but I definitely, for this year, want to focus on some more trousers, hopefully. With the leftover fabric from the New Look 6446 trousers, I then made a Grainline Studio Scout tee to match, because I kind of wanted a faux jumpsuit vibe. I wanted to be able to tuck the t-shirt into the trousers and wear it all in one go, and it was definitely a worthwhile experiment. It's very bright very bright but perfect for like a summer holiday or whatever. The next thing that I've made I'm actually I kind of in a way I'm actually even more proud of it than my wedding dress because I made a dress to wear for my one of my really close friends weddings this summer and I had this beautiful fabric that I found from Fabric Godmother and it was like as soon as Fabric Godmother posted this fabric on her Instagram I was on her website buying it because it was just one of those fabrics that I saw it and I just it was just so beautiful, I have to have it. And that actually doesn't happen to me that often. I'm really quite fussy when it comes to fabric. So for a fabric to really speak to me like that, I've got to get it. And I wanted to make something really special to watch this wedding and I wanted it to fit really well. And I'd learned from having made my wedding dress how valuable it is to take the time to make a toile, make your adjustments, 
you know, go back and change things if it's not right and then make a garment that fits properly and that you've really taken the time to, to do it sort of in the best way you possibly can. And this dress, floaty, beautiful, satiny, and I am just so excited for another reason to wear it. It's because of the nature of the fabric, it's more one that will be like a summer dress, but I wore it to the wedding and I wore it several times throughout the rest of the summer, just on casual days as well as on like, you know, for special occasions. And I love it. It fits me better than any other garment I've ever made. And I just, I'm really excited for next year to set myself the challenge of making another like special occasion wear dress that I really put the time and effort into. Oh, to tell you what it is, um, the, it's a hack of the, the bodice is the Audrey dress from the famous Frock's Little Black Dress book. And then the skirt is actually a hack from the Vogue V9075 pattern. And I used, I wanted the pleats of the trousers but as a skirt. So I actually have filmed for you guys how I did a hack to create the skirt with the pleats and, and how I did it. So I'll put that in the corner if you want to see it. Next, I made my very first swimsuit and I used the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe swimsuit pattern. I think so many people bought this year because it was just such a great pattern. And I used some leopard print swimsuit fabric from Minerva Crafts. I love it. It is if I'm honest, it has ended up as being a wearable twirl because I made it and then realised it was a bit too short in the body. I then went back like a month or two later and added, or weeks later, and added some extra fabric at the crotch to give me more room in the body, which has worked. It is totally wearable, but the fit isn't as good as it could be if I were to just make it again. And actually, I've got quite a lot of leftover fabric, so I think next summer I'm just going to make another one and really make sure that I get the fit right this time. I added little ruffles to the hips of mine because I'm a little bit like top heavy. My shoulders are broader than my hips. I've got really like narrow hips and adding those little frills like balances my figure out really nicely. And I'm so into, into that whole thing of trying to work out, okay, how can I manipulate this pattern to make it work even better for my figure and to flatter my body type? Because we've all, we're all totally different shapes and sizes. And that's the beauty of dressmaking, that we have the tools and the power and the knowledge and the skills to be able to adapt our clothes to be like the best that they can be for us and our taste and our figures and everything else. But I'm just so impressed. And actually, I was really intimidated by making swimwear, but it was genuinely really simple like not scary at all so if you haven't done swimsuit yet if you haven't tackled swimsuits yet pop it on your list for your you know sewing goals for 2020 because it's like really worth it next i made some more new look 6446 trousers so again it's, it's a hack of the jumpsuit and I made them in a navy blue viscose linen. They've actually, with hindsight, they're really too big for me. So this year I'm going to alter them and I'm gonna take them in, take them up at the crotch, take some of the fabric out of the legs and probably take them up a little bit because I think they'd be slightly more flattering if they were a bit shorter. Um, but I, this is the kind of thing I want to be able to wear in the summer, so I'm really glad I've made them. And for this year, I'm just gonna tweak them to get the fit better. This was also the first time I ever did loop belt loops and I got it a bit wrong because I made the belt loops a bit too small so that was a good learning curve to learn for next time that I need to leave more room to put the belt through. With the leftover fabric from those navy trousers I made a matching octon cami because again I'm just loving the summery like fake jumpsuit vibes. I did another alteration, well, kind of a refashion really, because the previous year I'd made a sew over it Eve dress in a, like a teal floral fabric and it just didn't suit me at all. It was just really unflattering on my figure. Wrap dresses I think are so good on like curvy women and like for example hourglass figures, um, that's not what I meant, but yes they look lovely on hourglass figures, but like pear shapes, so good on a pear shaped body type. And for me I'm a bit straight up and down a slightly boyish figure and it just didn't do anything for me at all. So I refashioned it and turned it into a wrap skirt and then used the scraps. I literally like had to create the pieces by stitching pieces of fabric together and made an Ogden cami. So again, I've got like a faux dress, but actually it's an Ogden cami with a wrap skirt and I like that I can mix and match. I think it gives so much more versatility, versatility than if it was just a dress because I can wear them on their own or with other things. 
The next thing that I made is a, I'm kind of moving now, you can see I did quite a lot of summer sewing and now it's going to move towards the wintry stuff and I've really had a good time this autumn and winter making jumpers, like the first time, well, actually no that's not true, I have made some Nina Lee Southbank sweaters before, but I had some purple ribbed fabric and I made a true bias Nico dress but I kind of hacked it to be more of like an oversized tunic, well it was supposed to be oversized, this purple one, unfortunately this is the only make from this year that is totally relegated to like the fail pile and will be going to a charity shop when I can check that my charity shop will accept it without a size label, if not I haven't put a size label in it. But um, it's just too small. I didn't consider the fact that the Nick, the True Bias Niku is sort of intended for very, very stretchy jerseys, and this was more of a heavyweight jersey with less stretch. So it's just too tight. It's too tight across the shoulders. It's not comfortable to wear, and I'm just not. I've barely worn it because of that. So unfortunately, um, that one is is going to go to the charity shop. But hopefully, someone else will get good use out of it. Um, but it wasn't all lost because I've since made a load more of those, of that like true bias, a Nico dress, oversized tunic hack. So I made it into like a tunic length so it just covers my bum and I can wear it like with leggings underneath. And I put a small slit at the sides so that I've got room to move my legs. It's obviously like quite an informal look and it's something I wear to be cosy at home as opposed to like out in a smart place. But so cosy, this is actually another one that I've made, so let me tell you about those. I also made another one in khaki, in like a khaki knit that I got from the um, new craft house. But this one again, a really worthwhile experiment, but the fabric is very thin and, not thin, it's just a more lightweight jersey. And I didn't really factor in how that would affect it. So it is oversized and it's got the nice bagginess that I was after. Um, and I do wear it, I've been wearing it like once a week for, you know, since I've made it, but it then led me to make two more in this gorgeous cable knit fabric from, I got one lot of this fabric in navy blue from First for Fabrics and another lot of this fabric in this denim blue it's called from myfabrics.co.uk and oh, th this is like nailed it. I ended up you may having to make the neck hole bigger because again the True Bias Nico dress is designed for really thin, really stretchy jerseys and this has got less of a stretch so I needed to make the neck hole bigger and I didn't really want to do like guesstimation and I wasn't really sure how to sort of redraft it myself because I've never sort of learnt those kind of skills yet. So I used the neckline from the Nina Lee Southbank sweater because that is designed for more like ponty weight fabrics that, that would have a similar amount of stretch. So I traced off that neckline and then I used the neck band piece from the Nina Lee Southbank sweater as well. And I just think that that really shows like a nice journey of how actually, even if you make something once, if it doesn't quite work out right, but you know in your head the concept is right for you and the sort of things you'd want to wear, it's so worth persevering. So I first made the purple ribbed one, it was too tight, so I sized up and made another one in a completely different type of jersey. That is a successful make and I wear it, but I realised that it would really work, like the garment would be the absolute best in a thicker, heavier weight jersey. And so then I've, uh, you know, I've, I've gone through the motions of making four different versions, three of which are now really great staple garments in my like cosy weekend winter wardrobe. So yeah, I really think that's something I'm going to try and take forward to next year of like not giving up on something if it doesn't go right the first time. Like try making another one but learn from what wasn't right about the first version. I also have made a ton of frayers. I can't believe it's taken me this long to get on board with the Tilly and the Buttons frayer top. I've had this um, stretch book for, I had it since it came out and it took me like I think a year or something before I then actually delved in and made anything from it which was a bit silly but I've now made four frayers. I've made one in a petrol cotton jersey. I've made one in a blue like rib jersey Where's the other one on my list? I've also made one in like a, a um, lighter blue cotton jersey and I've just made one and I don't think, I haven't got a picture of this yet because I haven't worn it yet. 
Um, let me hold it up and show you. This is the latest one I've made. So this is a much more drapey fabric than the other ones, but I've got it in this lovely like burgundy sort of, is it, would you call this burgundy or would you call it like plum or, I'm not really sure. Anyway, but this is a much lighter weight jersey, so it's got a bit more drape to it than the other ones and we will see how I get on with that. But this is gonna be to be like smart for work, tucked into like a smart skirt. A smart skirt that's yet to be made actually because I've specifically picked out this colour to match some other fabric I've got to make a smart skirt. Um, but yeah, I've now, I'm now the very proud owner of four frayers and they are definitely not going to be the last either because they're just, that's basically what I wear to work in the winter. I'll put a blazer on over the top if I've got like a really important meeting or something but generally I'll wear uh, a high, like a roll, high necked, long sleeved top tucked into a smart skirt. And it's just so comfortable and easy. I've done a few more alterations as well at the end of the year. So I altered, actually this was earlier in the year, I altered the neckline of my Megan dress by Tilly the Buttons. I've got two Megan dresses but I altered it on my summery one. And that was so worth doing because it was stopping me wearing it because it was gaping at the back. And just putting in some darts to take out the extra fabric has meant that it fits me so much better now and I'm so much happier wearing it. Which hopefully means that next summer it will get much more wear than it had done in previous years. Because you know when, when something just doesn't fit right, I just, I just don't reach for it. So taking the time to do the alteration will hopefully really pay off. I also altered my Tilly the Buttons Black Houndstooth Delphine skirt, which was already a hack in the first place actually, because I changed the shape of the skirt quite a bit from the original pattern. Um, but it fitted me so badly, it was like, it, it wasn't like close to my body enough. The waistband sort of hung away from my body, but then it was tighter on my like hips and it sort of stuck out at the sides and it sort of stuck out a bit at the front and back too. It just fitted me terribly. I just didn't take the time to fit it to myself properly. So I ad adapted it, I sort of changed the shape of the skirt, made the waistband narrower. And whilst that's been good, I'm still not finished actually. I'm gonna do a third, like another round of alterations to lengthen it, because it's a little bit short to be smart for work. I made a smart skirt for work out of some blue, sort of navy, really dark navy blue boucle wool that I got from the Goldhawk Road, and that has been a good one to wear to work. I do need to add some belt loops to it and take it in a bit, so that's gonna be like top of my alterations list for this year, 2020. I refashioned my True Bias Nico dress in navy blue velvet because it was too tight. Um, I made it originally for the new Craft House winter party in 2018 and I just hadn't really worn it since because it didn't fit me properly, it was too tight. So I decided to chop it off, turn it into a top and to help with the fact that it was a bit tight across my chest, I decided to take the arms off or unpick the sleeves and sew them back on again with a smaller seam allowance just to give me that little bit extra space across my shoulders and I wore it to my work Christmas party with black jeans and black boots and you know red lipstick and it's great so I think that's gonna become like a winter nice top and jeans you know staple hopefully. Really worth doing another alteration. And that's it! That is everything that I've made this year so I've listed them all out and it's 23 things. So when I think about the fact that I didn't actually do any or hardly any sewing other than my wedding dress in the first three months of the year, I've really like, that's quite a lot because there's only 52 weeks in the year. That's almost sort of one garment a fortnight, which I think is quite a lot. But I am, as I said earlier, I'm so pleased to say that the vast majority of these garments have become things I'm wearing a lot or will wear a lot. The thing that I've made the most of is the Taylor Buttons Freyers, so I made four of those, and my True Bias Nico oversized tunic hacks, whatever I'm going to call those, I made four of those. And that's been great because those are actually things I really needed in my wardrobe, like tops and comfy, cosy weekend clothes. I've really enjoyed looking back at everything that I've made, it also makes me kind of realise, you know, everything you make is like another achievement, you know, you've achieved that you've created something new and so it's really nice to look back at everything I've made I hope that you enjoyed seeing it all again and yeah please do subscribe to my channel if you'd like to keep up to date with everything I'm going to be making in 2020 give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it I'd love to hear from you in the comments 
and I'll see you next time. My next video is going to be a resolutions video, resolutions video, to talk about what I want to focus on with my sewing for 2020 and like, you know, new habits, forming good habits and all that kind of thing. So yeah, see you next time. Bye.